good evening, everybody. Uh, it's it's a, a very special live stream I have in store for you guys. I see we've already got a couple of hundred people climbing into the uh, live stream. Uh, so I, I have two very special guests with me who are here to talk about the uh, Victor Boots and uh, Brittany Griner uh, prisoner swap. Uh, the first guest is, of course, none other than Konstantin Yeroshenko. Um, he's a Russian citizen, and, you know, when he was working as a pilot, um, he was kidnapped in Liberia by uh, DEA agents. Uh, he was tortured there and, and then rendered uh, to the United States and given a 20-year uh, prison sentence under, uh, you know, false pretenses of uh, drug smuggling charges in 2011. Um, in April, uh, you know, Konstantin Yershenko was freed in a prisoner swap, in the last prisoner swap between Russia and the United States. Um, Yershenko was swapped with U.S. Marine uh, Trevor Reed. Uh, the second guest I have is uh, David Mendoza, who is a Spanish and American citizen. Uh, David was extradited from Spain to the United States on condition that, that he be allowed to come back to Spain to serve his sentence. Uh, however, uh, even though he was given diplomatic assurances, Spain was given these diplomatic assurances, they were ultimately broken um, and uh, later referenced in Julian Assange's extradition case uh, in, in London. Uh, so it, it's a huge pleasure to have you guys back on. Um, how are you? And, and uh, uh, it's good to see you, uh, Constantine. It's good to see you, David. Oh, good day, Richard. Good day, guys. I'm very glad to hearing you. I, I'm glad to see you. And uh, I'm very glad I'm now in, in my, I still in my country with my people, with, with, my, with my family. I'm so glad to hearing you. Hi, Richard. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure being back on your show again. Uh, uh, I appreciate you bringing a little bit of notice fair uh, kind of equity notice on uh, on this whole boot uh, Griner exchange and in relationship to Konstantin Yeroshenko and Trevor Reed. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. It's it's um, it's necessary. It's, it's necessary. And I think you guys are, are the most qualified uh, and experienced uh, to talk about this issue. I mean, there's so many people who want to talk about this. You guys are the ones who should really be uh, having uh, uh, not just your opinions, your your very real experiences with the DOJ, with extra, the U.S. extradition uh, complex, as we like to call it now. Um, right. So could, could I just just initially get your thoughts uh, from both of you on uh, the swap, Brittany Griner and uh, Victor Boot, and then I'll go into more specific questions. Uh, you want to start, Constantine? You want me to talk? I, I can. No, I David, can talk. Talk, talk first. Yeah, talk first. Then I. Yeah. I, I, well, I take my notes. Uh, not for one side or, or either. You know, I was I was uh, not swapped, but I was treaty transferred back to Spain when I was extradited. Uh, it was forced in the courts, but <clears throat> I'm just happy for the family, both uh, Brittany's family and Victor's family. Um, you know, Richard, it, it it's in pretty much every European constitution and even in the BOP guidelines uh, that a prisoner must be close to his or her family. Uh, and that's not for the prisoner. That's for the maintaining the relationship of the family while the prisoner's in prison. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy for both of them. Richard? And uh, I want to have some note, yeah. I'm so, uh, I'm so happy to... Uh, to have this news, what is was uh, two days ago, uh, Victor Booth was come to the Russian Federation, returned back to the to his family. He see his uh, wife, uh, mother, and daughter. And uh, I have maybe one note. Uh, yeah, it's so good any people to return to his to his country, and uh, I happy to grind it too. But more important point I, I was to tell you, uh, neither Victor Booth, neither I never was in the United States, as first point. Second, neither I, neither Victor Booth have a crime against the U.S. Mm -hmm. government or against Liberian law or, uh, or Thailand law. And I was 12 years in the American prison uh, Victor Booth uh, have 
uh, almost 50, normally 14 years in the, in the prison, in the US prison. And we, we never did, did the crime. But in the fact is, uh, this is all both uh, US citizenship, uh, Griner, or this is a uh, young boy Marine, was coming to Russian federations, was his real crime against Russian law, and he's spent his very, very short time, very, very, very short time. This is a more important point I, I, I want to discuss a little bit later. Very, In very short one, and uh, I think is is not equal swap because I spent 12 years, uh, Viktor Booth spent 14 years, but I saw glad Russian government push a lot, a lot to return me and Viktor Booth to his house. That, that, that's a very interesting point that you raised. I was going to ask you about this, it, whether you guys think this was a fair swap, because in the United States, uh, you know, in the Western media, the, some people are saying, well, this wasn't a fair swap. Um, and uh, they should have gotten, uh, uh, you know, uh, Whelan plus Griner in exchange for Boot. And I think, you know, they were saying this a few months ago, which is ridiculous. They want two Americans for one Russian. But, you know, uh, um, I, I, I wanted, I, I was hoping you could elaborate on that, Constantine and, 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 and David, um, you know, because there, there's, there's a disparity in sentences, right? Uh, like, like you just said, uh, Constantine, you, you spent, you know, over a decade in prison, uh, Victor Boot spent over a decade in prison. Um, they had a lot, you know, you guys had a lot less, uh, or, uh, left on your sentences on top of that, uh, compared to the people who were swapped. So actually, if you look at the sentencing, doesn't it seem like it's unfair to the Russians? Well, can I, can I jump in here, Richard? Let me, <clears throat> let me give you a little bit of understanding without any BS, the propaganda that you're hearing out there from the mainstream media. Um, let's talk about the Trevor Reed Yaroshenko exchange. Uh, Constantine, what was Trevor sentenced to when he was sentenced there in Russia? How many years he's was called, he sentenced? He, is, uh, he is, was uh, sentencing for uh, physical actions against policemen. His okay, but how, policemen, much, how, how much time was he sentenced to? Uh, he was sentenced, I uh, think, for uh, nine or ten years. Okay, let's say nine years. Uh, let, let me give you how the Russians perceive this and whether you believe it's fair or unfair, uh, Richard. But uh, Trevor Reed was sentenced to nine or 10 years. Whether you think it was a fair sentence or not a fair sentence, that's the Russian uh, judicial system. Yeroshenko, uh, oh, and let me remind you, Trevor Reed was in Russian jurisdiction. That means he was in Russia when the crime supposedly occurred. Right. Okay. Now, Yeroshenko was sentenced to 20 years in a federal prison. He never had any what's called due process of uh, legal due process out of Liberia. He was with, taken out of Liberia uh, on a plane by U.S. agents to the United States and sentenced for drug trafficking to a country that he's never entered. He didn't speak English, for God's sake. Um, his crime was, well, <clears throat> he was supposedly alleged that he was going to take uh, diplomatic uh, mail or, or transport diplomatic uh, cargo from, uh, from South America to, to Africa. Okay. Neither whether you believe one side or the other side is irrelevant to me. Yeroshenko spent around 12 years, right? Constantine, yeah. about yeah. 12 years in a federal 12 prison. years in the prison, yes. Trevor Reed spent about, I don't know if he even made a year, but about a year. Uh, now, again, you know, Yeroshenko has his position that the U.S. justice system is shit, and Reed probably has the same, that the federal, the Russian judicial system is shit too. Irrelevant of that, uh, Yeroshenko spent 12 years. Uh, Reed spent about a year. Reed had about, I think, uh, eight years left on his sentence. Yeroshenko had eight years left on his sentence. So that is what, that's how the Russians look at it. Said, okay, we want an exchange for Yeroshenko, who's got eight years left on his sentence, for Trevor Reed, who has eight years on, on his sentence. The same in relationship with Brittany Griner and Victor Boot. Um, Boot, I don't know how much you understand about his situation, but Boot was extradited out of Thailand. 
Yep. Uh, Boot received a 25-year sentence from, I think, a court out of New York uh, for arms trafficking, okay? Uh, uh, Brittany Griner received a nine-year sentence in Russia for a vape pen. Again, I honestly think that's a draconian sentence for THC, but that's the Russian system. Uh, just like the Americans have their system. Now, Brittany Griner has uh, about eight years left on her sentence. Well, Boot had about eight years left on his sentence. And that's how they, they, the Russians perceived it. Now, I know you've seen a lot of the, the, the mainstream media in the United States calling him a merchant of death. But who right. gave Victor that name of merchant of death? Was it the Russians, the Chinese, the Europeans, the Canadians? No, it was the DEA. Uh, you know, and, and in, in Boots sentencing transcripts uh, from his judge, his judge Schindler or Schindlin, I think her name was, uh, said quite the opposite. He was not the merchant of death. Uh, there was no evidence whatsoever of that. Uh, and and my other position with this is, you know, OK, let's say for that, that let's believe the DEA and say, yes, OK, he was a merchant of death. Well, you know who else is the merchant of death in the United States? Do you ever hear a guy's name by the name of Eric Price? You know who he is? I have, yes, but you need to tell everybody who he is. <laughs> well, Eric Price uh, is the CEO of Blackwater, which I think is now called Z or something like that. I'm not quite sure the, the name that they've changed it. But that gentleman is has been transporting arms all over the uh, continent of Africa, Central America, South America, uh, all with the blind okay of the United States. Now, what's to stop the Russians from passing in an eternal law, just like the Americans have passed their internal laws to in, in order to capture Victor Boot? Well, what's from the Russians? I mean, who, why do the United States have that power? And the Russians can't say, wait, wait a minute. We're going to pass an internal law that says no other citizens can uh, uh, transport firearms around the world and if we do catch eric Dude, price in don't want, don't want to cut you off South. david i just wanted to say one thing trump even pardoned those blackwater uh, uh people sent by prince to massacre they massacred an entire square in iraq and, and last year trump pardons them so you know it, the, I, I i see the double standard yeah i mean and, and so you have to understand that you know you got you gotta if you want to look at this in an honest manner you have to say okay well you know why is it that we, the, the Americans, can do this shit? But if the Russians were to do it, they would say, uh-uh, uh-uh, there's international law that, that doesn't allow this to happen. That's their problem with all this shit. Um, I don't know. I just, there's, to me, it's, I, what, once you allow it to happen on one side, that's what creates that uh, lawlessness, the wild, wild west, as to say, out there in the, in the international world. Okay, uh, I, I have a little bit two uh, small notes for David's speech. Uh, yes, it's a good point, but a little bit uh, notified uh, as, uh, as uh, people who are watching us. Uh, small note, first of all, not. Uh, DA manufactured case and jurisdictions, number one, against me, against Victor Booth is number one. Griner or the Sussmarine come to here and have real crime in the in the Russian federations. He must be respect Russian law and rule for it's no matter what what he's did, um, small uh, drugs or um, marijuana is no matter. Russian law is Russian law, and this is his his jurisdictions. This is is a big point because if. Uh, if I just now charge you in the in the Russian law uh, outside of the Russian Federation, exactly like a, about uh, anyone outside and manufactural case, manufactural jurisdictions, this is a more important point. It's yeah. not like a, a, I, I, I made a crime or Victor Wood made a crime, real crime. This is all fake and more important. Who manufactured case agent DA? Two of them, Luis Milione, supervisor, and Zacharasevich, 
supervising DA, who manufactured against, against Victor Booth and against me, not for the prevent some, some uh, illegal uh, contraband trafficking or uh, arms or drugs or in, uh, something in other substance is not. It's uh, for special, for different point, uh, his manufacturer case and press me and press Victor Booth for have a connections with, with the, with the uh, working for the US government. But I and Victor deny this is any actions have with the US government connection. But uh, another is very, very good point. What is David says? Yes, this is Blackwater OZ in my case. He was agent DA, his uh, uh, Petty McKay, US uh, United Kingdom citizenship, who mm. was before one of the director of the executive outcome. Then he changed executive uh, solutions. Then when his Nelson Mandela come to the power 2001 and his return back, this is mercenary company, come back to the United States and change his name. Blackwater, Grey Goose, and continue. This mm -hmm. is all criminal organization. It's very good point. Why don't prosecute this is this mercenary company who right now killing Russian Russian soldiers in the Russian territory in the Russian soul mercenary coming to Ukraine, take a rifle and killing Russian people, killing my people. This is more important. Uh, can we prosecute this? This is guys. I think so. Yes, I want to. I want to. But you know, a double standard. Now in the world, in the Western world, he's working is so much. Is so much. Anytime blaming Russian federations is don't uh, like a human rights, prison rights, following international law. But in the reality is, U.S. government. United Kingdom government or, or some European government don't follow international rule and law. This is very important point too. Mm. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no question. I think you know if, if you were ever going to bring a case against someone, it, it should be Prince and Blackwater. I mean, the crimes. I I I I've lost count. I've lost count in Iraq alone. In just Iraq, and you look globally, it's 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 a it's really a. a a worldwide criminal enterprise, but I, 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 I basically, you know, what, what, what David is saying, I think, is that it, it is draconian to give uh, Brittany Griner nine years, but uh, at the end of the day, she was actually in Russia, and and she, um, and you, your guys, your point is that she was actually in the Russian Federation, and and did something illegal, whereas uh, you, Constantine, and Victor Boot never even went to the United States, and they 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 not only put you in jail, they went and, and snatched you, they set up a sting operation, uh, uh, the 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 torture, the rendition. Um, and 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 treated you as if you had been in the United States committing a crime, and I think this this of course speaks to you know what what I talk about um, a lot on the program and I've talked about with you guys before, which is uh, the the extra territorialization of U.S. law. Right. You know they want they want right. U.S. law to be international law, um, and of course it doesn't work that way, right? I I want to I want to ask you both about uh, Victor Boot because you guys were saying the case against him was manufactured, and I think people watching will maybe. Uh, know the film Lord of War, which is supposedly, you know, with Nicolas Cage, it's supposedly based off of Victor Boot. So, no, this, so help me understand oh, what's real and what's not fake. real. Yeah, is, what, yeah, yeah what's what's fantasy, yeah. Yeah. exactly? I want I want to I want to get to the bottom of this. What's fiction and what is actually real? Well, let, let me let me jump in real quickly here, Constant, just for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, specifics of what he actually was doing and what he wasn't doing. I think Constantine is better at that because he had his own transport company going on in, in uh, the African continent. But what I can tell you is that, and this is not from what I'm saying, this is from what uh, is out of his judicial records. I can tell you Victor Boot's case was denied at the highest level in Thailand, his extradition was denied to the United States for not breaking any laws. Mm. Uh, but later, his extradition was conceded because at the time, uh, Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State. 
uh, for the United States. And she told the Thai king, because he's the one who makes the ultimate decision on whether the extradition is approved or not. And he told the lower courts, we, uh, there was, there was, I think WikiLeaks exposed it, but there was some funding that was heading towards, or supposedly Thailand was asking for, from the World Bank. Uh, and Ms. Uh, Clinton said, you're not going to get it unless we get boot. And that's my understanding. Now, what he was doing and how he yeah. was doing it, I, I don't know. Constantine. Yeah, and in other words, I have information I remember is yeah, exactly what is uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, Paul will have connection with the Thailand law and why information from the WikiLeaks. We are watching a US government pay, I forget, uh, almost $176 million by the, some products or something, military equipment to the Thailand government to pick up the Victor Boot to United States. Exactly. And his extradition pro, uh, process is done finished because his must be uh, after deny in the appeal court, must be going to the Supreme Court. Versus right. is not finished yet. But after Hillary Clinton, what are written formations, pay uh, Thailand government and try to uh, to push Thailand government to uh, take a Victor Booth and pay 176. Then later is normally this is kidnapping Victor Booth too. Because it's, it's extortion. It's extortion, yeah, basically. Yeah, is. yeah, exactly. This is extortions and uh, kidnapping Victor Boot too. And not only one I'm person was kidnapping, but completely with no due process rights and rule too, completely broken. Yeah, Victor Boot kidnapping, then have another Russian uh, citizenship. He was kidnapping by the US government from the Maldives. It's too. Maldives. Yeah, all of that without yeah. nothing process with, with the extraditions. Mm. How this is U.S. government actions against Russian citizens? But and, but but Constantine, I think uh, Richard and you too, Richard. I think what you're asking, right, is is uh, did did Victor Boot transport arms? Probably, probably. Not 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 not. No. Uh, Victor Boot not transporting uh, arms. Nothing. Zero. His flight to was uh, I read his case closely, mm -hmm. and uh, his flight to the Thailand to discuss to sell his illusion seventy six. That's okay. it. No but more. My 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 point is my point is uh, you know let's let's believe that the, the agents were correct. Let's just say even though Constantine's position and Boots' position is different, let's believe that the DEA was telling the truth. Well. How about on the U.S. side? I mean, how many individuals mm -hmm. in the U.S. have been transporting arms around the world? And as Constantine says, Patty McKay, who lives in Spain, by the way, with an extradition warrant to the uh, uh, United England, Kingdom, right? That hasn't been exercised. Why hasn't that extradition warrant been exercised? Because the executives have said, shh, 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 "Let him be." Because he can open up a big case of black worms that they don't want to see. Anyway, uh, my point is this, Richard, and, and and I think when you allow this lawlessness to happen, then you're allowing it for everybody to do. Um, it's 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 a very dangerous premise to get involved with, uh, and and you know a lot of the mainstream media has been saying, well, you know, now they're going to start capturing Americans. They're going to start capturing Americans, and they're going to start doing these extortions for Americans. Well, I got a, some news for you. You know, Yaroshenko, when were you arrested? Who kidnapped? Yeah, exactly. When, when were you? Two thousand. No, I right? never. I was arresting in the New York City. In okay, the in the courtroom, year? I was kidnapping in the Liberia 2010, May okay. 28. 2010. Boot was arrested in 2007, 2008. No, 2008 in the Thailand. Okay. okay. My point is this: that's been what 15 years ago, more or less, uh, 12, yeah. 13, 15 years ago. The Americans have been doing this for literally a decade. No mm -hmm. other country has been doing this. It's the Americans who opened up this extortion trade. Yep. Not the Russians, not the Chinese, not the Europeans, but the United States Department of Justice has been doing, started this game. So like I said, when you allow one side to do this, 
you better be ready for the other side to do it back at you. And all this nonsense shit that I've been hearing on mainstream, oh, now they're, they're going to start doing extortions against <laughs> us. Well, I beg to differ. You know, I think that started a long time ago. Thank you. I, I, I was going to ask you that as a question. This is a theme that you're hearing in the media right now. Like, oh, well, if, if we do a swap with the Russians, we're enabling the Russians to, to kidnap more Americans. And and again, I, I, I found this so ridiculous because, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we spoke, uh, uh, Constantine, about your case last time. We went in more into detail into that. Um, and you know, you were, you were kidnapped. You never, you never been to the U S and it's like, like David just said, this is over a decade ago. So who started this? You know, it's, it, right. it's not the Russians. It, it, and and right, even, even if you assume that, okay, the Russians are really doing that, they didn't start it. Right. But uh, I, I don't right. think it's fair to but, say that the Russians me, do this actively. Let me pose something for you and your audience. Can you imagine, let's say, gosh, Brittany Griner herself. Uh, they snatch her out of an African country, like Russia, like uh, Yeroshenko was snatched out of an African Liberia. Nation. Liberia. Let's let's say they do that to Brittany. They extract her out of there without any judicial hearing or anything. Mm -hmm. That is Russian nations. And Take fabricate the case. Another point. Fabricate, fabricate the case fabricate, too. And fabricate. They take her to Russia, and they sentence her to nine years or whatever. Can you imagine what would be on the U.S. news? And can you imagine oh what the God. United Nations would do? I mean, <laughs> so why is this okay for the Americans to do it or the United States judici judiciary to do yeah. it to the Russians and think that the rest of the world is going to turn a blind eye? I, I call bullshit on this. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, the, the, we have to be honest when we have these discussions. I'm looking at, at the Russian side as well as the U.S. side. I don't. Ex I expect all countries to follow international laws, not international norms, international law. Right. Very good point. Very good point. They like to play these word games, right? You see this a lot. Right. The the word right. games uh, uh, constantly. What they say one thing, but they mean something completely different. Um, right. And and I I. I I can't believe I didn't like pose this question last time as 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 directly, but you know, co constantly. I want to ask you and 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 also regarding Victor Boot, why did they? Why did the U.S. government go through so much effort? Uh, although we know they do this a lot, but why, why did they go through all this effort to to go after you specifically and, and after Victor Boot specifically? What were they trying to achieve with that? No, is the uh, point he's want to. Uh is uh, how this is in the English language way. Uh, uh, just a moment. Uh, is, uh, is fabricate case against him against uh, and against me to uh, uh, a little bit later I correct translate just now I don't know how to correct speak. Is this is more important. Is just a bit. Uh, just I translate correctly. No the, worries. But did you understand the question? He wants to know. Richard wants to know why do you believe the Americans went after you, or why do you believe the Americans went after Victor Boot? That's that's his. Ah, ah oh, okay. Ah, this point. Okay. Why? Because uh, Russia now have. have uh, I very believe, and uh, I see here he's starting more stronger response. Must be response. Uh, I think in Russia wins this is uh, uh, to this is fight against re return me back and Vic Victor uh, too because yeah but right. why why did the, why do you believe the Americans actually targeted you uh, targeted me yeah why yeah. why what's what's the reason what do you think that they why did they do that I mean uh, there's the Americans always the U.S. judiciary has a reason or its agents of why they th why they went after you. Why why do you think they went after you? Is what I think, Richard. Is that correct? Is that the question you're asking? Yeah, I mean, when I'm asking that, I I know also that if you look at the war on terror, they went after tons of guys. They said, oh, this guy's Al Qaeda, that guy's this and that, and they they're completely innocent. But you know, uh, uh, right. yeah, like we were just talking about how they they leveraged all this. Um, all this money against Thailand for Victor Boot, and you know, in your case, Constantine, okay. why all this torture? His, all this is all this is big stick operations to discredit discreditate Russian government. That's it. I'm a small part of the big chain 
to discreditations Russian government, okay, mm -hmm. fabricate case against me and try to push me. His wannabe, I uh, have a uh, talk against Victor Booth. What I don't know this guy, nothing, nothing. I don't know him. And I think so uh, to push him too. His wannabe, something have uh, informations against Russian government or speak. Uh, all lie against Russian government too for the discreditations Russian government. What mm -hmm. uh, this is more important point because he started my case. We don't discuss about diplomatic mail or about illegal transporting drugs. We first uh, communicate in the Kiev, in the Ukraine, in the Hotel right. Intercontinental, and the first meeting with the uh, Petty McKay. United Kingdom citizenship. He's asked me, do you know Victor Booth? We don't discuss about drugs, about transportation. The first questions, do you knew? Yes, I knew. Like a question just now for you guys. Do you know mm -hmm. exactly Osama bin Laden? Do you know? <laughs> it's a simple question. Yeah. What it means is, know. have you heard of Victor Booth? Uh, no, that's... just tell me, do you know? Okay, but exactly. Yeah, In the... the... 12 years ago, my English is very bad. And he's asked me, do you knew? Yes, I knew. But how knew personally or why uh, uh, media source right. is so far different? This is different, But yeah. this is enough to thinking and believe, believe how all US, uh, US systems try to not on the facts, I try to mm. all cases manufactured by the belief or looks like a, in my case, too, many points have a decision by the judge. We are believe Yaroshenko criminals, not in the something I can do it. But we return back. All this is manufactured cases only for one reason. Discreditate Russian governments in the old world, in the all uh, against all world. Like we are very bad persons. Russian government is so, uh, so uh, you know, it's corrupt or something like this. I don't know what is what his mind, but I know the, for the facts, through the all my case, through all my case, we started talking many times against Victor Booth, against this is uh, some arms trafficking uh, or against something criminal organizing, what uh, I can enjoy too, but. For these reasons, have, I was spent 12 years in the American prison. Yeah, it's it's a um, it's a really daunting experience, and and, and I think uh, um, you know I, I would always go back to the main point, which is that even if like hypothetically you want to believe every single line in the court documents against uh, you, Constantine, or against Victor Boot. At the end of the day, you never went to the United States. You were never in their jurisdiction. So what right do they have to drag you across the planet, torture you, and put you in jail? Uh, you know, they, 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 this is really the crux of the issue. And I think, um, uh, you know, you're, you're saying that they did this to discredit the Russian government. If I may, I would, I would add a second. Uh, uh, this is just my, my uh, uh, opinion, but... I think it's another extension of their their uh, soft power and 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 uh, basically using the diplomatic right. channels, uh, the the DOJ to to basically weaponize uh, U.S. laws globally. You know they they want to use this as an extension of of the U.S. government uh, uh, across the planet, and that's kind of what the war on terror also did, right? It it gave them an excuse to just go anywhere they like, kidnap people, you know, kill them, etc. Right, Richard. You know. Um over the last literally 15 years or 20 years, the United States has been withdrawing itself from every international court or oversight judicially. And there's, and I'm talking about from Papa Bush all the way right to the Obama administration, Trump, all these guys. I don't know if you've been seeing that, all these international agreements and uh, the, the United States has been withdrawing itself mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. There's a reason behind that, uh, because they don't want oversight by any any international court. Uh, they want absolutely full power on how they make their decisions. There's only one thing that the United States demands on international agreements that every country has with it. 
Do you know what that is? Extradition treaties. Bingo. They want to they want to make sure every country has an extradition treaty with the United States. And there's reason behind that, because that empowers their internal laws. That means U.S. laws to be able to snatch somebody up without having to go through an international court. Um, and that's very dangerous. That's very dangerous yep. because what happens, then other countries say, wait a minute here. If the United States is doing this, we're going to do it. And that's what creates this lawlessness. Yeah, uh, and, uh, absolutely. Oh, I, I, I want to be a little bit added. U.S. government static is not right now, not decades ago. He's starting a long time ago. If you remember, right now, prisons in the Cuba, in the uh, Guantanamo Bay, how many people right now sit? And all these people never was extradited, have never legal procedure, nothing, zero. He was kidnapping around the world. Uh, either там, Russia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, uh, citizenship is no yeah. matter from here, from what, what size. He was kidnapping, and these people, nothing have extraditions, don't have uh, там, due process rights, yeah. don't have uh, legal rights, have nothing, zero. It's a small important point. It's not starting not decades ago, it's starting a long time ago. Mm -hmm. In the US government, I, I, uh, I knew he's testing all world how he's reacting. And they very like it, how to react right now, Russian government, and before acting China, where is Canada arresting mm -hmm. one girl from the Huawei, one of the director of the Huawei, yes, and try to extradite to the United States. What does China did? China exactly arresting two or three uh, Canadian citizenship and prosecute for the life or death penalty. And after this right. one, what is doing? Immediately gives this as girl free. You see how that creates this lawlessness, Richard? I mean, that's yep. exactly what happens. The Chinese aren't gonna lay back and say, okay, convict one of ours uh, and give her a life sentence. No, they're gonna do the same shit back to the US judiciary or back to a US citizen. Uh, that's, that's what happens when you, when you allow one side to do it outside the, the rules of international law. And then the other side says, okay, well, we're going to play the same game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, th this is, uh, um, I think it's worth noting, and we, of course, uh, mentioned this before, is that in, in, in your case, Constantine, the, the U.S. already had an extradition treaty with Liberia. They didn't even use it. They just kidnapped you. Like, right. I, I think it, it, it's, it, it shows how disgusting this, this whole operation is. Like, e even after establishing all these extradition treaties, they don't even use them sometimes. They don't, they don't even care to pretend that they care about uh, treaties and laws and, and uh, <laughs> international norms. I, I, I think that was really disgusting. Um, and, and, I, and I understand your, your point, uh, 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 Constantine, that they're trying to test the reaction. I think that's a very valid point. It's, it's sort of like... Um, you know, it's like something you'd see in the animal kingdom. You'll have one, you know, a, one, one uh, a bigger guy trying to test the others to see if they'll stand up for themselves or just get eaten alive and so on. And, um, you know, I think, David, you and I, we talked about what Constantine just mentioned in, in, with uh, China and, and their reaction to uh, this Huawei uh, 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 officer, uh, not officer, I don't know what she was, CEO, CFO. She's, she's you know, at the top of the, the company. And they, they basically uh, arrested her in Canada um, and, and can you remind the viewers what the reaction was, uh, 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 by the Chinese? Yeah. The, I mean, it was, it was clear the Chinese sent, uh, you know, I don't know if you understand how countries communicate, but they do it officially through what's called, uh, diplomatic notes. Yeah. The Chinese sent a diplomatic note to the Canadian said, stop it immediately. <laughs> stop it. Because and, and, and it was because if uh, now this is public, it was because the Chinese were selling uh, technology to the Iranians. Well, right. that might be U.S. law that you can't do that. So under as a U.S. citizen, I couldn't do it. But that's not for a Chinese citizen. So the Chinese said, uh -uh, we're not taking this crap anymore. They arrested, I think it was two or three gentlemen. One was uh, a businessman and another one was an ex-diplomat, if I, if I recall correctly. 
and they promptly sentenced him to death penalty. It wasn't even life since, uh, in prison. It was a death penalty. And it's my understanding that the Chinese let uh, the Trudeau government understand that, listen, if we don't get this individual back, uh, I forget her name, but if we don't get her back within the next 60 or 90 days, I, he gave a time frame. He wasn't messing around. Uh, we're going to execute these sentences. And the Chinese weren't joking around. They were very, very, so my, my point is this, is that when you allow it to happen and you use these third governments to play as a pawn for the United mm. States, for instance, Canada, uh, to play as a pawn for the United States, to pull, so it's them, it's the United States saying, we, we didn't do it, they're doing it. That, that's not, I mean, the only reason they did it is because you asked them for your extradition. Uh, it creates a, a, a lawlessness or outside, uh, the realm yeah. of international law, uh, an opening that's extremely dangerous. Absolutely, I, I believe her. Her name is um, Meng Wanzhou, if I'm saying that correctly. Oh, uh, that's correct. Yeah, and and again, I I think this is just my my opinion, my observation. I don't I don't think the Chinese like having to do that, but but it was it, it kind of shows you that they're not they're not messing around, and you know that that like you said, this opens uh, you know a, a whole can of worms because. You know the Americans have been doing this for a long time. You you guys know this better right. than me, and 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 it, it basically invites other countries to start doing the same thing, um, uh, uh, if, even if it's just to defend themselves. Um, you know, I I, uh, I I also think it's 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 kind of like the mafia because the diplomacy uh, is so, you know you're, you're supposed to use soft power to to convince other people, but they 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 weaponize it and basically turn all these instruments. That, that should be used for, um, uh, you know, peaceful means. They they turn them on their heads, and they, it becomes something very violent, you know, and and coercive. Uh, well, and, you said you yeah. said something. Pardon me for interrupting you, Richard, no, no. but you said something to me the other day that was kind of, you know, it clicked a light on my head, and it was you're correct. Um, you know, it's it's nice to see a little ray of diplomacy actually happening uh, between the United States and Russia. Right. Uh, with the exchange of Victor Boot and Brittany Griner. It, it really is. Uh, now That's what I wanted to ask are, you guys about. Yeah. And now, now, if these characters are capable of doing it between prisoners, why can't they do it from stopping people from killing one another? Yes. Why, why can't the United States and Russia find some mutual ground to stop this, 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 this war, this, this war yes. that should never have happened? Exactly. This is something I think that is that is uh, uh extremely poignant and i wanted to ask both of you guys uh david and constantine you know uh do you think that this prisoner swap with uh britney griner and and victor boot and and your swap uh constantine with trevor reed uh you know do you think these are good examples of how two countries can work uh, uh with each other how diplomacy can actually succeed even during a war right uh, uh, we can't deny that the us and russia yes, are this, confronting this, each this, other this is a good example but what's happening now in Ukraine, this is very, uh, very different situations. You know, I, uh, it's possible to, to uh, discuss about this point is long time uh, and create this is problem about Ukraine is specifically create the United States. Exactly. It's uh, coming not uh, one year ago, not two, two years ago. It's created it's a long time ago. Step by step, systematically, since the Soviet Union collapsed by the U.S. government, he's created this problem. This is uh, systematically. But I saw happy. Uh, this is two connections right now. It's a very difficult situation between U.S. government and Russian federations. You still have a good connections for some small point to swap me. Swap Victor Boot or another some of the global uh, connections about uh, third world or using uh, uh, strategic nuclear uh, nuclear power because what I'm hearing from the Russian TV uh, from the West world anytime uh, 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 U.S. government says we probably to make the actions to prevent. Russian uh, to prevent third world. This means probably 
maybe using nuclear uh, uh, strategic weapons against Russian federations is very hmm. dangerous speech right now from the US government and NATO war too. Yep. But to right. return back, it's a so uh, so good is have still have a connections between Russian federations, NATO country and the, uh, with the uh, US government too. Mm -hmm. But we have so far different view to the world, very far different world uh, view to the world because mm -hmm. Ukrainian is this is uh, us Slavic problem. We not bring military base to the close to the US border or to the England border. No, this is us territory because it was Russian Empire, then Soviet Union, then uh, Western world collapse, Soviet Union split the Russian federations. But it's, it's uh, very, uh, very different po uh, point to discuss with me in the English language right now about this one. Richard, let me let me make a point too. Um, and I think uh, I think Yeroshenko and Konstantin can agree to this. Uh, the Russians have been wanting to do trade on Yeroshenko on boot for many of years. This isn't something that just occurred six months ago or mm -hmm. or five years ago or five months ago. It just it, for many 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 of years that the Russians have been attempting to make exchanges for for these individuals. Yes. Um, I can tell you that the U.S. administration, both Trump and Biden, didn't want to do this. They didn't want to do this. But there was sufficient enough pressure, public pressure, on the U.S. administration to force this trade. Uh, because uh, I think the majority of people understand that really these people should be back in their countries. Some, some of them won't. Saying, oh, fuck it. Excuse my language. Oh, well, it would keep them in prison for the rest of her life. And she was over there. She, she created a crime and keep her in prison for, for whatever the extension of the crime is. But my point is this, is that it wasn't on the Russian side that they didn't want these transfers to happen. For instance, in my case, my own personal case, uh, to force the United States Department of Justice to transfer me, I had to go through three separate court levels. That's the federal courts in Spain. That's the Supreme Court in Spain. And finally, the EU to force this, the, the, the Spanish executive to act in my favor. It just shows you the amount of power that the United States has upon all these other countries in order to get prisoner swaps. Uh, it, it's, it's, and, and I don't know if this is because the Department of Justice, those individuals in there say, screw it. You know, it took us a lot of time to get these guys here. They're going to stay here and do their crime here or, or their time here. Um, now, but another thing that I think we need to discuss is the understanding of why they have these prisoner swaps. You know, I think that's an, a real important, important point to make. Yeah, I need to interrupt too, David, you, because, yeah, it's correctly. It's not right now, not this year. In the before, since 2010, Russian government notify U.S. government, you're the broken the law, you, U.S. government. You don't fall into international law, yes. But U.S. government denied my three treaty transfers to Russian federations three times in the previous, denied. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I don't remember, uh, if I correctly, in 2015 or 16, or I think 15, Russian government want to swap me two, one for the 13 people, U.S. citizenship. And you know what's happening 2015? Uh, where is one of the Russian uh, from government coming to the Paula Wolf? Paula Wolf was a woman working in the right. justice justice US systems. She's the head he of the says, treaty transfer. She's the head of the treaty transfer department. Yeah. And he says it's not like a bazaar, not like a marketplace for the human beings uh, swapping, something like that says, and deny actions. Only is correctly. Where is more pressure from the Russian federations and from the public, maybe in the in the United States by the family grinder or these guys. This right. is 
this is uh, was uh, uh, swap right right the, the 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 executive like in my case you know when i started taking the spanish executive to spanish court and i took uh, uh eric holder and the obama administration <laughs> to federal civil court for failure to comply with a civil contract the executive, the, uh, at least the Spanish executive, used to visit me on quite frequently, Constantine could tell you, and kept on telling me, oh, uh, stop these court cases. We'll handle this. Don't worry. We got it. We got it resolved. We spoke with Americans. They're going to send you back. They told me that in 2009. I said, wait a minute here. Now it's 2011. I haven't been transferred. Because remember, that was required in my extradition. And in 2011, I... The U.S. or the Spanish, the Spanish executive came and visited me again and said, uh, "Oh, stop this uh, filing uh, in federal court in Spain. We promise you, we'll get you back by next year." The Americans promised us. Well, 2011, 2012, 2013. I said, "Hey, what about me, guys? I've got two yeah. young boys in Spain and a wife. What about me?" Until so, all this nonsense. They were playing this game, and unfortunately, I see it the same with the Whelan family. You know, he should be back home with all due respect. They should have given uh, uh, a separate trade for him. Mm -hmm. All this crap about, but my suspicion is the Russians are saying, you want him, we want him. this X person. And until his family puts sufficient enough pressure on the U.S. executive and then in the public to force this trade to happen, it's never going to happen. I mean, I, I, I just want to... I wanted to get to Whelan in a second. You, you guys, did you read my questions or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is a really important point you bring up because, you know, Dave, I, I, I've studied your case extensively, if I, if I may say so. You know, I, I reported on it because it connects to the Assange thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, again, I'm reminding the viewers, you are both a Spanish, so an EU and an American citizen. And uh, right. one thing that sticks out in your case is that you, your, your own government's plural uh, right. uh they screwed you you know to, to put it bluntly right. and right. and you know the the spanish uh, diplomats lied to you and they, they they didn't do anything you had to go sue them in the supreme court two times and you won by the way <laughs> to wow. get them you know to, to to move the needle what i'm seeing here is the only government that actually cares about its own citizens is the russian one you know and and, and that that shows itself that that manifests itself in the case of constantine like they they actually they've been trying for years i i, I remember reading a press release from i think a month after they after constantine got arrested where they were complaining about this and saying this is you know it, it's a violation of his right to due process and so on so from the very beginning the the russian government is very clear on that now when it comes to Paul Whelan, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, both of you guys about this. Um, uh, you know, where, where do you think this stands right now? Because, uh, David, you're, you're basically saying that it's, it's because of his own government, the U.S. government, that uh, Paul Whelan, uh, he isn't at home now. Not the Russian government, correct? I agree with I, 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 I You know, like I said, I don't think Brittany Griner would be back home right now if it wasn't for the U.S. public putting pressure on the Biden administration. It's, it's that clear. Uh, you know, the Biden administration and the Trump administration both wanted uh, a trade that the Russians saw as unfair. I guess they wanted, uh, uh, for boot, they wanted everybody, uh, all Americans outside of, uh, in, in Russian prisons, outside. And, and the Russians are saying mm -hmm. enough. You know, we want what's been a fair trade. That said, I can tell you in my personal case, I and and I'm supposedly living in a democracy, a free democracy. Uh, uh, they did not move the needle until I forced them to move that needle. Uh, you know, you heard it in the Assange case. Uh, what did what was the guy's uh, the prosecutor's name? Lewis. Oh, um, Lewis. Yeah. You, you, you remember what he said? Remember what he said about my case? Oh, we can't use Mendoza's case uh, for the United States uh, as not their assurance is not being valid because he's back in Spain. Yeah, oh, that, that was disgusting. You know, I was so yeah, confused by that. Uh, like, uh, that's not yeah, the point. I was, I was so, yeah, I was so angry when I heard that, that I said, wait a minute here. Uh, the only reason I was back in Spain is because I forced that transfer to happen uh, judicially at a tremendous financial cost. Uh, not because the Americans or the United States uh, judiciary was going to allow me to go back. Uh, by no means did they want me to go back to Spain to serve mm -hmm. my sentence. 
Yeah, I, just to, um, sorry, before I let Constantine jump in, just, just to further prove that point, even when you did get back to Spain, they, they made you serve the full sentence against Spanish law. Right. So. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a whole other story. But I've got Spain yeah. in the United Nations court right now, and I think we're going to have a favorable ruling shortly here. But just to give your viewers a little bit of understanding of that, yes. uh, you know, I was, my crime was possession and distribution of marijuana in the United States. Um, and so that had a maximum sentence under Spanish law of six years. I was sentenced to 14. Anyway, when I got transferred back to Spain, after nearly seven years in a federal prison, um, the Spanish judge, who's now the Minister of Justice of Spain, just to show you how this all works and plays out politically, the Spanish judge said, no, I'm gonna maintain this 14 year sentence. And I looked at him, I said, well, that's impossible. You're here to adjudicate. You're not here to legislate. Mm -hmm. I said, under what Spanish law uh, are you applying this 14 year sentence? It doesn't yeah. exist. He doesn't exist. And he just, yeah, he took his pen and he just started looking at his pen like this. And he said, that's what I'm giving you. So <laughs> I've, it's taken me literally five years to get my case in front of the United Nations. Uh, they don't accept between two and 3% of cases presented to them. Right. Uh, but ultimately they accepted mine. Uh, and hopefully they will put a stamp on this nonsense. Uh, because, like I said, it just shows you the, the strong arm of the United States administration on all these other governments. Uh, you know, and, and it's starting, it took Australia so damn long, but it, it's nice that I just saw a glimpse the other day, the Australian government at least beginning a little bit of an attempt mm -hmm. to say, hey, wait a minute, what you're doing to Assange, stop this. It's, we've had enough of it. Uh, that should have happened a long time ago, Richard, with all due respect. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and and, and uh, I don't know if Constantine wanted to jump in about uh, uh, Whelan and, and why he's yeah, in, yeah, back I home want, I want to something say some, some point. And point may be very important point. Is number one. I will remember what is Paul Whelan arresting to the, uh, have exactly real crime for the spy is, I don't know what this says, Western or uh, media, but here I read it exactly for what, what his real deed, what his have information tried to have it, and he have real crime for the, for the uh, spionage, uh, spionage is number one. Uh, secondary, uh, after was arresting, have a trial, he and his family officially notified, we don't want to be sw uh, swapped to the Russian criminals like a drug trafficking or arms trafficking illegal. He and his brother, David, his name, his office officially says many times, no one times, many times he says, I, 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 I look in the CNN, Fox News, NBC, his speech his brother and mm. exactly the same positions uh, was have by the u.s government too he says we don't want to swap uh, like a very big criminals what is lie against me exactly and uh he says like uh, his uh will and innocence guy what is not true he's uh, his was have a crime and uh and I think so. This is uh, why he's the one discuss. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know for sure. I don't know information against what's happening. But for this reason, he spent how much? Four years in the Russian jail, three years, and uh, he's still in the here. I, I believe if he's in the beginning, starting U.S. government says, okay, we want to be true to him. This is guy back. He told me. I, Victor Booth, or Samara Inazal, have uh, uh, almost 100 Russian citizenship in the Russian jail. Because one spy, he has a lot. This is, we are, we, we are like a how much? Spy crime is a lot. <coughs> Normal crime is, is too, is, is, is so far in Oka for the center, for the espionage or for the um, uh, some do it like a, a illegal transport, uh, some uh, contrabands is so far different. Mm -hmm. For this, for these reasons, I will remember how his 
was reacting to U.S. government and his personality. For these reasons, maybe is uh, he's still in the in the uh, Russian jail. But again, uh, what is swap me to this uh, young boy or Victor Boot is not fair because I was spent 12 years. Victor Boot spent 14 years in the U.S. is U.S. jail. And uh, my point is, is not fair swap. Yeah, and let me let me say something real quickly here too, Rich. I apologize, Constantine, for interrupting. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But you know, and 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 I was in prison for marijuana crime, for a THC crime, just like uh, Brittany Griner. And without any doubt, a nine-year sentence for, as my perspective, okay, that's with all due respect to Constantine and the Russian Federation, a nine-year sentence for THC crime is outrageous. But let me say something also that I think your viewers need to think about a little bit. I was in federal prison in the United States as Constantine was. How many people are still sitting, rotting in a federal prison for growing marijuana, growing, it might've been their second or third time caught, but growing marijuana and doing a life sentence. A life, that means the rest of their freaking Ridiculous. life. They're gonna be sitting there. It's absolutely, or I don't even care if it's a, it, just as long as it's a nonviolent drug crime, uh, uh, I was with kids with a handful of crack cocaine doing 40, 50, 60 years in a federal prison. The, what about the outrage and the crying about that? It's disgusting. That, that's it's evil. absolutely disgusting. And it, not only is it evil, you see the two sides of the shit. I mean, OK, well, look at Joe Biden's uh, 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 son. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hunter. Uh, Hunter. Hunter Biden. Uh, I mean. This kid, and, and God bless his heart that he has a problem, but this kid should, you know, under Joe Biden's crime bill and, and Clinton's crime bill, this kid should be doing a 20-year federal sentence. Why is it this character is sitting out on the streets while everybody's forgetting about all the rest of those individuals that are sitting there mm -hmm. rotting and dying? Is it because they're, they got black and brown skin? Because they don't have the money of, that the Bidens have or the political pull? Where's the outrage there, man? I mean, just I, yeah. I walked away from that federal prison literally in tears, having to say goodbye to guys that I know are going to die in there, uh, you know, oh, for a marijuana crime, <sighs> bird, uh, dog. I mean, all these these uh, Jamaicans. I was like, holy shit! And there's nobody to voice for them. And I want to say another one interesting point. Just now, I remember uh, point about statistics in the uh, U.S. prisoners. Uh, U.S. population from the old world, 5%. 5% is 345 million people, almost 5% for the population from the United States. But 25% of prisoners in the world this is in the United States. The point is, this is people so criminal or system rotting. I think in people the same, like from the Russia, from the Euro, from the Spain, from the United Kingdom, from the Africa. The system is so rotting. This is mm -hmm. perfect example, uh, uh, like a gulag. Anybody what I see 14 years, anytime tell me Russia, you like a, like a in Russia gulag, there is no guys. Here, right yeah. now, in the US government, 2.5 million people in the jail. How many people in probations, in the home rest? Maybe another five or six more uh, million people. Mm -hmm. It's too much, uh, too much people sits in the jail. This is perfectly system is so rotting. Up to the uh, 1980 population's prisons was half million plus minus. To the two decades, at least um, how much? Four or five times more mm -hmm. growing prison po populations. This is yeah. exactly example. Yeah. This system, the United States is so, so rotting. People must be standing from the knee and change this is all law and change the government. This is pure example because yeah. if people don't have rights, not human rights, don't prison rights, all this is all this is nonsense. All this, I'm sorry, for question is bullshit, straight, this bullshit, everything. Because yeah. I see what is it, uh, uh, justice. Fake is not a justice. I was prosecuted for the one word. Yeroshenko understood 
paths of drugs coming to United States. This is in my indictment and to the old case. The point is, 12 years ago, I don't speak English. We are discussing the trial, how prosecutor and judge and other understood what I'm thinking. He's, uh, he's mm -hmm. re reading my mind, his <laughs> right. telepath extra sense, and more another important point questions. Understood don't mean agree, do it something. Right. It's so far different. Yes, maybe I understood what is Agent DA says, but can I agree, enjoy something? Illegal actions is not. But another many cases, what I and read it, read more cases. What does it mean? Not violent crime. I mean, this is word crime. This is exactly you must be something do it actions. What does it mean, crime? As this is all nonsense. Lots of cases, not violence, crime. What does it mean? Or what does it mean another life sentence plus five years probation? What does it mean? <laughs> or two life sentence? What is it? It's Big insanity. So you, you give yeah. the time. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I, 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 I share your frustration, guys. Sorry, sorry. Continue, Dave. No, I, I think his point is more than valid. I mean, the numbers that he shot at you, that the United yeah. States has uh, 25 percent of the world's prison population, where they have 5 percent of the world's population. I think that in itself is as demonstrable as possible to show us as human beings who really has a, a, a judicial system is that's draconian, the Russians, the Chinese. Come on, man. I mean, uh, the, the numbers don't lie. And that's that's yeah. their numbers. So I the suspect numbers don't it's lie. a little bit more than that. Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is such a good point because I, I think, you know, uh, um, what, what Constantine was saying that, you know, people are not different in, in they, they, people are the same everywhere. Right. So right. when you look at these figures in, in the U.S., does it mean people in America are more prone to crime? No, it, it, it means the system is corrupt. And, and the, like, like right. you just said, David, the numbers don't lie. And, and I think this is such, a, such an important point um, because in Hollywood, you know, in the media, they condition people. You grow up in the West thinking like, oh, the Russians have gulags. The Chinese will put you, right. you know, in this. Exactly. No, no, no. Exactly. It's in the U.S. It's in the U.S. they do this. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, I, I, and, and I think it. Go ahead, Richard. No, I just want to say, like, I it's not just uh, uh, the U.S. I, I mean, I, I'm, I've been in that court with, um, in the U.K., right, with how they're treating Assange like a spy. Like a spy. A journalist like a spy. That's the, the, that's the most textbook thing you can do to, to, to silence a journalist. You say he's a spy. And, and that's in the U.K., in central London. I've seen it with my own eyes. And they're sending him off where? To the U.S. Yeah. It, it's absolutely draconian. Um, and I mean, until the United States incarcerates uh, a majority of its populace, uh, I think you're going to see it because it's the it's the prison industrial complex right. that I mean, who's the vice president, uh, Kamala Harris? <laughs> uh, you know, she was uh, she was the uh, attorney general, was it, of, of uh, California? Yeah, yeah, was exactly. She, yeah. She refused a federal court order to release prisoners because of overcrowding. Her, her position was, wait a minute, we can't do this. Because why? Because it would destroy our, uh, our, our, uh, our businesses that are inside the yeah. prisons in order for those prisoners for those businesses to continue to, to, to create whatever they, they're creating. Uh, I don't know what they fabricate in California prisons. I've never been in one. Uh, but, but it, I mean, that shows That's you the disgusting. Of, of, of the disgustingness of, of this whole shit, you know? And she's the vice president. Yeah, and, and basically, I can just give you one example. Uh, during 2020, I think it was, during the pandemic, you had... Uh, Garbage workers, you know, tr tr the trash guys went on strike. Forgive me, I don't remember where this was in the U.S., but the solution to that was, okay, you guys want to strike? We are not going to give you a higher pay. We're going to go use prisoners from the local jail to do your work for pennies, right. which is even cheaper. Right. I mean, and that shows you how they use prisoners as, as, as basically like cheap slave labor, you know? Cause you, well, you, I, I can tell you this. Someone I who's in prison constantly. is going to want to go outside, and they're exploiting that, you know? 
Right, and and I can tell you, Constantine can verify this, or any of of U.S. families uh, members who have been in a federal prison. Have you ever heard of Unicor? Unicor yeah, this is, is like a uh, slavery. It's pure you know what slavery. They, wait, pure you know, slavery the, joke. Yeah, the Unicor in, uh, I'm trying to remember, at, we were at Fort Dix. I was at a few prisons, but one of the prisons I was at it was in Fort Dix, uh, New Jersey. You know what they were producing? They were producing cable lines for Boeing, for the Boeing what? aircraft. They, yeah, cable lines. And within those cable oh. lines, I mean, these guys were getting 18 cents an hour. 18 cents an hour. Now, now here are people that have absolutely no income, uh, no support from the family, because the majority of them come from very poor families. Most of them are foreigners, uh, whether they're Mexicans or Central Americans or South Americans, but have no family support. So they're sitting in there with lengthy sentences, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And these fucking industries, unicorn industries. They're, they're making now. If that's they're using well, them as I'm slaves sorry, for sorry. the military what, industrial what? conflicts, man. That's yeah. exactly correct. Uh, and uh, they they had another unicorn there. I don't remember if it was in uh, uh, Colorado, the prison I was in, Colorado, or the or or Fort Dix, or one of the other prisoners, but uh, prisons. But there was another one that was doing the fatigues, the outfits. For the army, uh, the military. This yeah, is in Fort Dix, sure. David. Just now, a little bit interrupt you. Very short time. Yeah, this was in the Fort Dix. But the point is, people have a um, 50, 10, um, 20 cents per hour uh, yeah. working like a slave, but selling this as product for the commercial price, for commercial right. price, is exactly. not for, for selling uh -huh. for the um, one dollar per, per the product. Is not. Is selling for the commercial price. This yeah. is yeah, and exactly example how to using slavery job. 2.5 million inmates in the in the systems, at least and, and, half million in the federal systems. And federal and, system right now using slavery job. And Constantine will tell you, you know what I did, Richard, when I was there? I got a group of them and we did what uh, we filed with the federal courts, uh, a motion a request saying, okay, well, shouldn't, you know, this is a federal prison. Shouldn't the federal minimum uh, wage apply to federal prisoners? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what the court told us? Go pound rocks, buddy. You're not getting a cent out of this. Uh, as a matter of fact, they threw me in isolation for putting this group of uh, individuals <laughs> together to file with the court. Yeah, that this was is like something from a stand. movie. Like, how, how was, dare you well, rally the, the workers in the, in the, or the, yeah, the and, workers? And is, me, yeah. Believe me, I had the protection, a little bit of the protection, because they knew I wasn't effing around uh, of the Spanish yeah. embassy. Because every time they would mess around with me, even helping Yeroshenko, you know, I, I told you in one of our interviews. Yes. Uh, the Spanish ambassador, this guy, came to visit me. And the first thing that came out of his mouth is, why are you helping this Russian? He has his own uh, his own uh, embassy to help him out, his own diplomats to help him out. I remember this, yeah. Yeah, and I looked at the guy and I was like, this guy's an ambassador? This guy's, an, with all due respect, an idiot. <laughs> I, I, my response to him was, hey, you know, I said, if you see a, 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 a child drowning in the, in the river, uh, do you, before you jump in and save or attempt to save that child's life, do you ask, hey, uh, what, what nationality are you? Absolutely exactly. Not. You wouldn't do you that. Try to help that. No, you wouldn't do that. I said, Yeroshenko is drowning right now, and he needs help. Uh, the guy just looked at me with a dumbfounded look. He can't understand empathy, I guess. No, no. It just shows you, no, it just shows you the politics that's behind all this nonsense. Uh, and that's something that we need to talk about, I think, is why treaty transfers are necessary. What obligates treaty transfers? And I, and I, I uh, encourage you to try to attempt to talk to Reed and Griner and see if you could get them on your yes. show. So they can explain to your audience, not just Yeroshenko or I, but they can explain to your audience the necessity for these treaty transfers because that's really what the humanity is all about. In my, not yeah. only that, uh, in, the, in the BOP's own policy guidelines, a prisoner should be located as close as possible to their family. And there's reason behind that. And that is just the premise is to maintain the family unity. You know, even though the dad or the mom or whoever did the crime, 
the kids or the family should not suffer for that crime. And that's why the Spanish court was obligated to place that condition on my extradition. As a matter of fact, the EU Charter of uh, uh, Human Rights, Article 8, obligates it within the European nation. Yes. Uh, and the only one, well, I wouldn't say the only one, but the one country that refuses to respect that is the United States. You know, yeah. even with its own federal prisoners, talk to your federal prisoners in there, uh, ask them, how close were you to your family? Although it's it's required within the BOP guidelines, they won't do it. I, I remember you, you, they not only kept you uh, all the way in the United States away from your family in Spain, but when you, you requested a transfer closer to your parents in the States, they moved you right. further away just to spite you. <laughs> yeah, they, you know what the deal is? My parents lived in Seattle, Washington, and my mom was, uh, was diagnosed with stage four uh, pancreatic cancer at the time. And so I asked my case manager, I said, is there any way, any way in hell you can send me to a higher FCI? There's one in Sheridan, Oregon. Uh, is, that, is that possible? A week later, he came back and said, I got good news for you. I said, what is that? And he said, uh, you know, I think we've got you going to Sheridan, Oregon. I'm pretty sure. I said, well, can you make sure? Because my parents can't travel. My mom has pancreatic cancer. And he said, don't worry. Came back a couple days later, says, yep, it's a done deal. We got you at Sheridan, Oregon. You know where they sent me? <laughs> to Fort Dix, New Jersey, the farthest prison. On the other on side the of the country. On the other side of the United States. Yeah. Uh, and it, it just shows the, gosh, the way these people think and how they behave. They have very little understanding of, of human decency, as far as I'm concerned. And I had it too, for this poem too. And uh, I was see my family, my wife and my daughter and my mother, 2010 one time and 2011. Mm -hmm. The next time see my family, 2018, I never see my mother again because it's passed away. I'm sorry. And the point is uh, my wife and my daughter tried to visit me law many years try to push in class, but US government denied give half a visa to traveling to United States to see me. And only Russian government push a lot. Mm -hmm. US government was uh, up to the top line of the foreign ministry and the 2011, uh, 2018, after seven years and allowed to come to uh, my family see me in the jail. In the, I, I was in, in the Denbury. Uh, Connected with. This is our exactly point. How is human beings? This is US people, US government, mm -hmm. at least, because I'd never see seven years. And up to this swap, another four years, I don't see my family. This is exactly show how US government is human beings. Yeah, and I and I want to I want to I want to say something real quickly because I don't want your Please audience do. to get the wrong wrong impression with this. It's not the United States people. Uh, believe me, I'm an American <clears throat> as much as I'm a European citizen. Uh, if they had all the information, the honest information out there, uh, I think everybody would agree. Yes. Uh, believe me, I defended a lot of U.S. citizens and federal court because I was. That was my task and while I was in federal prison to, to screw over the federal government as much as they were screwing me over. But it's not. It's the system. It's the draconian system that the United States federal government has imposed. Uh, so I want to make a, yeah. a, a very, very clear. Uh, the United States has been extremely good to me, uh, to my family. Uh, I have majority of my friends are American. So I, I, that's an important point I want to make. Yeah, I, I, I just want to echo that sentiment. I think it's really important to, to differentiate between governments and people because even even in the United States, you know, like you said, I think most people would not be okay with what um, uh, their government are, are, are doing um, to, to other countries and, of course, to, 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 to them as well in terms of, you know, denying them health care, uh, uh, college. Uh, you know, j just to um, drive that point uh, of, uh, home further, if you go, just go right now on YouTube, look up, you know, uh, uh, any of these travel uh, channels where you have American, um, uh, Americans who go to 
visit other countries. There are people who visit like every country on earth. Look, look at the reaction they get when they go to countries that have been bombed by the United States. You, you see, they'll, they'll go to central Damascus and people are, you know, they're, they're so happy to see them. They have nothing against them whatsoever. Right. You know, they, co right. complete friendliness between, between people, right? So that, that's, right. that again speaks to the humanity of it. I think it's really important to, to, to underscore that. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long. I, again, I'm very grateful for your time. And, and I just want to ask you if there's anything else you wanted to add in terms of, you know, um, your, your swap uh, uh, with Trevor Reed, uh, you know, Constantine, or, um, you know, Brittany Griner and, and Victor Boot. Uh, again, I know this is just speculation, but, but do you think we'll see uh, Paul Whelan being transferred uh, or rather swapped anytime soon? And, and who do you think the, the Russians want in exchange for Whelan? I, I, that, that's something that's been on my mind. Well, if uh, uh, this reality, uh, in my point, not like I'm not from government working, in my personal view, personal mm -hmm. view is more important. I never see equal persons in the, uh, for possible to swap Whelan because it's... Uh, Espionage is very serious crime. It's no matter what, in the Russian Federation or United Kingdom or Spain or, or in the United States, is a very serious crime, very serious. In some country, death penalty for these reasons, he's received 14 years. And I hope it's no matter, we are all human beings. He must be going to his country, it's no matter. I, mm -hmm. yeah, if, it says like I'm personally, I want to be any people with close to his people, close to his family. Right. Yeah, it's, but uh, situations uh, about him, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I can say right now what's happening, but I so happy for the uh, grinder, for the, uh, this is young boy who slapped to me, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm so happy. It's no matter what, any people must be close to his family, to his people, or yes. at yeah. least maybe is do treaty transfers to his country. What is US government deny me three times, and one time before previous deny swap. It's exactly show how the US government like his own people. I think it is before. One for the 13 or 14 people, Paul of Wolf denied. Yeah. Richard, my, my suspicion, this is just my suspicion, I'm not, is that the Russians are open to having a trade for Whelan or doing some sort of treaty transfer. Uh, but I can tell you this from personal experience, um, I just don't see it happening unless the Whelan family puts pressure on the administration. Exactly. exactly. Uh, it's the same same shit with uh, Julian Assange. I mean, uh, it took the Australian government way too long, way, way, way yeah. too long to defend. Unfortunately, Julian, yeah. Or at least begin a, some sort of uh, executive defense against Julian yeah. or, or in favor of Julian. Uh, but that only happened not because they're doing it out of kindness or humanity. They're doing it because of public pressure. Yes. And it's time that we as a people control our governments and our governments stop acting as if there are controllers. Um, yeah, humanity needs to take foot on all of this at some point. And I just don't see it happening unless uh, Paul's family, Paul Whelan, and God bless him, you know, uh, that his uh, they they put up a stir or a stink with the Biden administration. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm. Uh, I, I echo your sentiments, and 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 um, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with me. No one is saying like it's their, uh, the, it's his family's fault for not putting up enough pressure. No, no, no. It's it, no. the whole the whole point is that it's the U.S. government that needs to move the needle at home. It's not the Russians right. that are saying no because this is a you know this is a theme that we heard constantly in the last months. Like, oh, the Russians don't want to send a, a grinder, or they they're refusing to hand over you know a bunch of Americans for for one prisoner and and, and you know do an unfair right. swap basically. And that that's just not true, you know. That, that there's there, yeah. the unwillingness is on the U.S. side, unfortunately. Yeah, and and that won't change. I just I I'm sorry to say this, but I, that won't change unless Whelan's family puts pressure and as much mediatic pressure as they can. That would be my advice for them, uh, because it was the same shit with me in Spain. I mean, the Spanish executive yes. would 
deathly scared of the Americans saying, well, we can't do anything until I got in the news. And more importantly, I had some uh, the Supreme Court, the Spanish Supreme Court ruled twice, said either you get him back or there's not going to be a single extradition again. And that promptly uh, made a made a, a response from the U.S. Department of Justice. Yeah. Uh, again, guys, uh, I, I don't know if you have any closing thoughts or fi final remarks, but you know, I, I just wanted to thank you so much um, uh, on behalf of the viewers and, and and from myself for for coming on here. Uh, you know, it, the 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 first show we did was amazing. This is also just as amazing and and so insightful because you guys, you your experiences, um, uh, you know, with the the U.S. Uh, federal prison system, uh, with uh, uh, the the swaps and and extraditions and uh, i mean it's 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 so much for one just one person to take in and and you guys uh have have conveyed um uh you know as best as possible what you went through and what uh is happening right now with the current situation so i'm i'm really really grateful for to, to both of you uh david mendoza and Konstantin yurashenko thank you guys so much really thank you too richard i appreciate uh you're one of the uh media outlets that uh uh, really put out their honest reporting, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. For addressing addressing Julian's case, uh, addressing <laughs> Whelan's case, Griner's case, Reed's case, Yeroshenko's case, Boots' case, my case. Uh, I appreciate it. I very much do. Uh, you know, and, and Thank you. you know, I'm sure you're on a, a shoestring budget. But I appreciate you reaching out to me. Oh, Richard, and I, I want to say thank you. Uh, Thank you too, because uh, it's very rare uh, from the Western world journalists who are really show reality, not something dreaming. You show even a real news, real problem around the world. We are discuss, not like a, some uh, some journalist uh, like a liar. For these reasons, uh, people must be new. Your channel is so good. Uh, I, I'll, not only I starting watching, and lots of Russian people starting watching too. Thank you. Oh, okay. You re re represent real news. This is very rare. <laughs> very rare. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You so I appreciate much. that. Another, all, all people who are watching us, I want to say for the future, Happy New Year. You must be, New Year must be very good for all us family, for all us people. Might be yes. all problem. Just now what is happening around the world and more important in the European Union. Because it's do it sanctions you're punishing oh, yeah. yourself i want to be all stabilized this is problem with the people just now i see in the europe have lots of problem in the european union in the united kingdom but i so happy this is all problem must be passing in the new year thank you so much thank, thank you one, one last thing richard one yes, last of course. thing i just want to if if julian's family is watching or whelan's family is watching um you know, I spent a lot of dark days in a federal prison, a lot, uh, all kinds of stuff runs through your mind. Uh, <clears throat> Yeroshenko did the same. And I used to tell Constantine, if I can win, you will win. Uh, you don't lose faith. That's all I have to say is, uh, is, is hopefully Julian doesn't lose faith. Uh, hopefully Paul Wheeling doesn't lose faith, lose faith. Anybody in federal prison, uh, try to fight your way. Don't lose faith, uh, because if I can do it, I guarantee you, everybody else can do it. Yep, a amen to that. And and uh, I think it's uh, uh, really important to su support people who are going through that because you know you can the, the yeah. isolation is 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 crippling. It's it, it can be yeah. very bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's inhumane. Yeah, it's inhumane. I think that's really a huge takeaway from all this. You know, from studying both of your cases, uh, Julian's case, it, it, there's a constant theme of of inhumanity towards uh, the accused, and I think it's it's so bad. It's it's really it's so disproportionate and unnecessary. Um, and uh, you know, I I um I just wanted to to respond to what uh, Constantine said in terms of Europe. My electricity bill went up a hundred and ten percent. So how about that? <laughs> yeah, I got the lucky news Welcome yesterday. to the Russian <laughs> guys. Mine please went welcome up. to the Russian Federation. We have free <laughs> lights, very cheap lights, uh, heat, uh, fuel, gas. No problem. Please welcome. <laughs> I live in Spain. Mine went up quite a bit too. I don't know how much, but quite a bit. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much again. I, I, I'm sure we can do another video about about uh, the sanctions and, and Ukraine specifically if you'd like. Uh, but th this was, uh, I, you know, I've taken up enough of your time and, and I'm very grateful again. David Mendoza, Konstantin Yurashenko, thank you guys so much. Thank you very much, Richard. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, I got to hear you. Bye, Konstantin. See you Bye. later. Bye-bye.